It is 90.3 KEXP, and we stream all over the world at KEXP.org. My name is Troy Nelson here in the KEXP live room, and I am with the one and only Duff McKagan and his wonderful band here. So if you're all ready, take it away. You're here, still here Some are gone Brothers, sisters and moms Someone you love He had enough He went back to drugs I guess he had enough Lights go down. You are still here. All you hold dear remain. I feel when the lights go down. You are still here. All you hold dear remain.
talking heads, wasting dollars, like doing crap day after day, dropping taxes on business bylaws. In a world this time, they say, gotta rise up, gotta keep on fighting. You know, we've seen this all before. This too shall pass if we keep our heads on. In a world this time, they say, chip away, chip away. I'm withdrawing, chip away, gonna pray for something new. Suckers who invented this FTI would laugh My little holler Oh hey Put an end to this Chip away, chip away I'm a drowning Chip away and play Something new Chip away, chip away Can you hear me calling? Get away Till this You're listening to Duff McKagan live here on 90.3 KEXP. The new album is called Tenderness. Thank you so much for taking the time to perform for all of us. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure. We played the show box last night. It was awesome. And what's going on tonight at T-Mobile Field? I, you know, I actually don't know. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> um, it's Duff McKagan night at, at the Mariners game. Did they make bobbleheads? I asked you? if they would make a, at least one bobblehead of me. Um, for our dog, but no, 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 no <laughs> bobbleheads. There's a T-shirt or something. But you're going to be performing, correct? We're not. Oh, you're not performing. No. Oh. So yeah, no. We um, we're going to do some stuff. I, I hopefully we're doing something with um, with something good. Uh, we, we've gotten involved with Union Gospel Mission here in town. Cool. So uh, maybe there's something with with them tonight. Oh, uh, that's great. And then Easy Street Records, you're going to be performing there in West Seattle that, tomorrow. Yes. That you will be performing at, for sure. Indeed. Awesome. We're going we're gonna to rock, I think, our whole set. So uh, I've done that once once before, and that is the funnest thing ever. Awesome. Besides this, of course, Troy. Uh, I mean, I would hope so. Yeah. And thank you. <laughs> Playing in front of a bunch of cameras, walking around you all the time. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. It's not nerve-wracking. And you have to pretend they're not there. No, I, I, I'm fully aware they're there at all times. <laughs> Uh, well, obviously, Duff, you have some deep history, not only in music in general, but Seattle specifically. Of course, you grew up here and currently uh, reside here, but you were the very first drummer for the Fastbacks. Indeed, I was. And uh, Kurt Block has become a friend of mine over the years. In fact, uh, I play in a band with Kurt Block. I'm in his band called Full Toilet. Oh, I, I've been asked to play on Full Toilet um, <laughs> so, uh, in the band. They've asked me to join. You've asked me to join your band. <laughs> 
over email. Well, what's funny is they asked me to fill in on bass three and a half years ago, and I'm still filling in. For I, me. I guess I'm still, I'm filling in for you. Cool. But you are welcome to step in whenever you want, because I know that you have aspirations of being in a band called Full Toilet. Well, I mean, I was in the farts. <laughs> exactly. So, kinda... The farts, Full Toilet. Yeah. Some things never change. Once you get older, yeah, you feel, I guess, never mind. You go down <laughs> that rabbit hole for a while. Well, speaking yeah. of the beginnings. Sorry, Aubrey. Sorry, Aubrey. <laughs> speaking of the beginnings, when you were 11 years old, you bought a Pat Travers record solely based on what the cover looked like. And then lo and behold, it was a great record. Would you say that was one of the first sparks that lit the fire for your love of music? I mean, no, no. I grew up in this th this huge family. I was the youngest of all of them. So... I grew up to music. I grew up to the Stones yes. and, and, mm -hmm. and Zeppelin and uh, 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 um, Sly and the Family Stone. And, um, but, but by the time I was 12, I wanted something of my own. If you're in a family of eight kids, you want something of your own. And the Pat Travers record and the Kiss Alive 1 record, just for the cover. I got home with Kiss Alive 1. I'm like, what? This is a live record? What a ripoff. Um, I, you know. But uh, <laughs> that three-chord rock of Kiss coincided right at the same time I met a kid with a, with a mohawk, and I saw the first, like, uh, Mentors and DOA flyers up, and punk rock is brand new in Seattle, and I went that direction. It's interesting, the uh, album covers. Like you, it's almost like you could hear what the music sounded like before you even listened to it, your imagination, because obviously pre-internet you couldn't sample you know, the music, but you'd see the cover in record stores and just be like, wow. Yeah, indeed. And that was like really intriguing. You moved to L.A. in 1984. What can you tell the listeners the difference in attitude between bands at that time oh, yeah, from you... Seattle to L.A.? So Seattle, bands would help each other out, and you'd borrow each other's gear, rehearse each other's, you know, basements or whatever and, and teach each other riffs and um, help each other fold up your, your you made a single, you'd fold all the little the sleeves, you'd glue them and like, you'd every band would kind of pitch in. Somebody, you, oh, you made a single, cool. Well, I'll come over and help fold up the things and get them out. Um, I got to LA and it was really super competitive. Um, People were stealing your gear, and uh, it was a different thing. Very, uh, you know, it's a big world. It's a big, big city, mm -hmm. competitive, fighting to get to the top. Here, it wasn't that way at all. It's like I'll help you get to the top. You're going that way, mm -hmm. but unfortunately, at the time when I left, the reason I left, a huge influx of heroin, which is no secret to to you or anybody in the city, came in at about eighty two or so, and I had a choice of like, get out now. Or, or kind of get swallowed up in that thing. And so I went to L.A. to get away from the, <laughs> from the drugs and the heroin. Smart move. I, I did figure out you can't pull a geographical on stuff. And, you know, I did learn a lot from that. But, uh, you know, I met uh, the guys. I met Slash right away. Went over to L.A. And through an ad. And, and Izzy moved across the street from me. And met Axel straight from, through Izzy. And, and the rest is kind of history. Happened pretty fast. It did, yeah. Yeah. I love the story. Uh, you went down to L.A. with a guitar and a bass guitar. Mm -hmm. And do you think it was absolute divine intervention that cops all of a sudden showed up at your little apartment because the guitar you had was actually stolen from somewhere seven years previous? And it wasn't you, and it wasn't the person who sold it to you. But they tracked it down, and they took it away from you, leaving you only with a bass guitar. I got that guitar that was stolen from seven years earlier from Kurt Block, by the way. <laughs> This not is, that he amazing. stole it, not that he stole it, but we traded guitars. He's like, Do you, I think you'd like this guitar. It was a BC Rich, like, I don't even know what it was called, mm -hmm. but it was like a Johnny Thunders guitar. Closest as we could get, we couldn't afford a Gibson, anything. So uh, I couldn't. And uh, yeah, that guitar, the cops showed up in my crappy little apartment with cockroaches, you know, the door opens, the cockroaches just scatter. And, uh, and they said, you have this guitar. I do. We're going to take it from you. They could tell I was just too young to have stole it seven years prior. True. And I was too poor. They just felt bad, and they just took the guitar and left. That's amazing to me. And how they tracked it down. It actually oh, no, they, here's how they tracked it down, because I, was, I had a job. You get paid on Friday. My rent was due on, like, Wednesday. So you would hawk your guitar for that two days for $39. You could, you could make the rent, and then you get your paycheck, and you could go get your guitar out of hawk, pay your rent. 
And then that's how they found records of that guitar. Yeah, you have to give me your ID and all that stuff where you live, yeah. Amazing. I just, I love that story. Uh, this album, Tenderness, it's your first solo album released purely under your own name uh, in over more than 25 years. You did have a late 90s record called Beautiful Disease. Did you have a direct vision for this project, or are these songs that you've just been toying with over the years? Um, no, there was a direct vision, I, uh, and that was... I. I this kind of austere sort of um, music here is something I have been toying around with for a long time. I, I think, you know, uh, The River Rise is a huge, by Lanigan, huge influence on this record. Uh, this, this broken-hearted demo of Deepest Shade that Greg Dooley did that Lanigan played for me before he, I think I played on Lanigan's version of that song for the Imitations record. Mm -hmm. um, but... There was a Johnny Thunders acoustic record way back in the day, and I always wanted to do something like that. And I mixed all those things together. But I went out on the road with guns. And just before that, um, I, was, I got, went down the rabbit hole of watching all the cable news. It was 2015, the end of that thing. Yeah. And, and people, they started bringing on the panels that were screaming at each other, and they were talking about this divide. And I've been traveling this, this country and, and the world, but this country... More specifically, you know what they're talking about, the divide, for like, I guess 40 years, nearly 40 years. And I, I hadn't seen this divide, and I, I started kind of buying into it. Mm -hmm. Like, well, there must be this new divide. And I went out on the road. I turned off all the news and turned off Yahoo as my homepage. And, yeah. and stopped. I followed all the people on the news on my Twitter. I just muted it all and went out and, and on the road. And I go to all these his historical places I love to go to just started talking to people and I realized this divide wasn't there. I do read an awful lot of books, a mm -hmm. lot of history books, and um, they're very informative to me uh, about history repeat, repeating itself and, and, um, and how dangerous sloganeering can be and, and how ugly it can be right now. It's, it's an ugly turn we're in. Yeah. Um, or then in 2015, it was, it was getting really sort of ugly. And mm -hmm. so I just, started writing words like Seattle Weekly when I was writing, writing my books, right. kind of writing those words and maybe a third book. And it turned into this record. Mm -hmm. And you also wrote the compassionate song Cold Outside, which was after you were walking through the remnants of a, of a homeless uh, uh, encampment and also read that you wanted to undemonize how people feel about homelessness and the people. What was your experience with that? I mean, I don't know if... I, I, I have a lot of, I guess, aspirations, as we all do. Like, we look in Seattle, but you travel to this this country, there's just so much homelessness. And I'm I'm that guy, you know, who walks quicker to the car with keys in hand, don't make eye contact, you know, just get your car, pretend like it's not there. And But inside, I grew up in a, in a Depression-era family. My, my parents both grew up in the Depression. I'm the youngest of eight, so my parents are much older. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I always have grown up thinking I'm one step away from that. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I really I think hard about issues. I see men mental uh, health and, and drug addiction, things. I, both of those things I ex personally experience mm -hmm. issues with. Yeah. And I see the homeless and, and I'm like, okay, what's the deal? What am I scared of? And, and um, why, is it, why is there so much of it? And why, do, why is it so visible here in Seattle? And what can we do about it? Mm -hmm. And I, I hear about money being thrown at it, and I love what Pearl Jam did. I'm not sure where the money, you know, like where does it go? And, and we hear Amazon's going to throw a bunch of money at Microsoft. That's amazing, but where? Mm -hmm. And so I went down to the camps to, to, to the jungle with these great guys from Union you know, Gospel Mission and just sat down and talked to people. You know, nobody asked me for a dollar, and it was nobody knew who I was. I don't think, and you know, talk, finally we talked to one guy who was into um, like industrial music, and we kind of struck a chord. And I told him, you know, I play music, and he's like, "Oh, we had a friend in common." He goes, "I know who you are. All right, now I know." Who, and, and just a regular guy, and how he got there. There's a lot of um, issues of you know, child abuse that leads to a foster home where there's more abuse and then there's drug addiction or there's mental illness. There's things, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think a lot of times you see here about the families going homeless, but they don't, they're not 
what I from what I've learned, they don't stay homeless very long because there is resources to to get out of that. But it's the mentally ill and the, and the drug addicted, which are kind of maybe a co. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, What's the word? They, they go, they're going hand in hand. Right, right. And uh, I, I, I'm trying to figure out what I can do about that. Yeah. And where this money's going to, maybe I can help figure out where, to, like, the best place it should go to. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, a, you know, the mayor of Seattle. I'm just trying to, one guy doing something. But if I think if I talk about it, mm -hmm. that somebody else will, will maybe look into it mm -hmm. as well. And I think... If another person does it too, and and that's how we get things fixed. It's not the, we can't depend on the politicians. Or the, right. We could never. When I was in punk rock bands, we knew that. Then right. we rallied against the lobbyists and and apathy. You know. So um, anyhow, yeah. Uh, I just talk about it, and hopefully somebody else will go. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's well, let's let's look into this. And like you said, you know, you've always felt like you're just a few mistakes away from being in that exact. Scenario. I mean, even with uh, all the success that you've had, that that still re can remain true for somebody. Do you attest to that? Yeah, even if I mean, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I can get there. I can get there esoterically in a, in a heartbeat. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so uh, I just that's just the way I grew up. Yeah, man. Well, you know, I think like, it's wonderful that you do talk about it and that people do talk about it and hopefully, you know, come to a better solution at some point in time, for sure. And it's a beautiful song and a beautiful new record, by the Great. way. Great. We're not going to play that song today. Not going to play that one. Would you like, should we play that song? We're talking about it. <laughs> I mean, that's totally up to you guys. I mean, you have free reign. We do. I was going to ask you about Shooter. Are we going to skip well, over yeah, Shooter? No, let, let us not skip over Shooter. <laughs> oh, it's your interview. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just so curious how you two became friends. How did these two worlds collide? Long time ago. I met him a long time ago when I had a band. I just moved to L.A. about 20 years ago, mm -hmm. and I uh, had this band, Stargun, and we were um, playing a house party somewhere. I think that's the first time that – I remember our manager who moved me there, Sean Rosigliano. I don't know if you remember that guy, but he uh, he was like, dude, Duff's coming. And I was like, no way. You know what I mean? Like, couldn't have been more pumped about the – you know, uh, meeting you at that point, you know, but then we became friends and then we did some shows with loaded and did some other things and, um, uh, just kind of would, would over the years, I mean, we both live in the same town and we would, we had mutual friends and we'd kind of just see each other out and about over the years, you know, and, and then this kind of happened mm -hmm. and it was perfect. I mean, like when it came, the word came about doing a record with Duff, like I was immediately, Excited because I always liked the stuff that he sang. I loved the Johnny Thunders cover on Spaghetti Incident. And, like, I, I like, immediately was just always attracted to his deal in that band. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? For so, sure. like, to, to have known him and this come together, it was just, like, I felt... I was just very excited from day one. I was like, because I think I said I think this is gonna work really well. When I was talking to to Brian and and you in the beginning, I just thought, I, I think the musical sensibilities are just too easily matched. Do you know what I mean? In other words, he brought my crappy demos to this <laughs> to, life. to this lush place, <laughs> and he understood it. The thing is, he understood it. We're, we we became fast friends, like you said, twenty mm -hmm. years ago. We remained these easy friends. And then, but we've never worked together. So that, that's, that's another level of, it, will it work or not? Yeah. And going up to his house with my acoustic guitar, and he with his piano, like in the first minute and a half, we knew it was going to work. And we, heard, we did hear the bells and whistles and all the things and, and the austerity and the importance, I think, of, of um, the subject matter. And, <clears throat> uh, but this record is the most, like the, the best. This is the band that's in the, the room right here that played on the record, and uh, they taught me a lot about where not to play. Mm -hmm. And less is more. Less is more. That's yeah. great. Well, it's a fantastic record, and I know that myself and listeners would love to hear a couple more. If that's cool with all of you. Yeah. Well, um, we were going to play a we were going to play a song by by a local band. Oh. If that's okay. Uh, absolutely. Uh, by a local band that. Uh, 25 years ago, I guess, 24 years ago, um, Mike McCready put, a, put together a group of songs, 
and got Lane Staley and Mark Lanigan and Barrett Martin and Baker, Mad Season. And we, um, I got the chance to play this song with, I filled in, I was Baker mm -hmm. at, for the Seattle Symphony oh, gig. Yeah. Uh, and Chris Cornell was, was Lane. And uh, so we, we, we going out to this headlining set we're doing, the uh, tour we just did. We need more songs than just our record. And it was the first time I watched that Ben Arroyo Hall footage. And I saw the first song was River to see it with Chris singing it. And it's, it's what I really mourned mm -hmm. his, watching that image. I'm, I'm standing next to him playing bass and singing down with him, you know, and, and, uh, and I, I, I lost it. I cried and, and I called Shooter and I said, look, let's look into doing this song. And last night, Mike came and joined us and played it. And uh, so this is our version. Wonderful. You're listening to Duff McKagan live here on 90.3 KEXP Seattle. Down, oh down, 
self chosen. My pain is self chosen. Down, oh, down, down, oh, down, down, oh, down, down, oh, down. To say is I've been shot through. Never look back, don't look behind you. We're all done getting fooled. Look up, the sky's blue. Never look back. I blind you We all want the truth We all something new Never look back It will bind you It's getting better soon The light is coming through Never look back Don't look
jumped in quick Cause it's cold out, sky It's getting dark There's a blowing wind Once again I turn my eyes away Walking fast With my keys in hand I shudder knowing that this could be me On the streets Lost, we're hungry Only by a little grace of God And providence Or lucky street Where are we? It's cold outside Who do we see? Blue fields of misery How do we feel When it's cold outside Is it better him? Much better than you Duff McKagan live here at 90.3 KEXP, and what a room full of talent this is, too. A fantastic band. Thank you all again for taking the time to perform for all of our listeners today. Thanks for having us down, Troy. Absolutely. And also, Duff, thank you for, well, not only a great new record, but thank you for the raw power band that uh, was put together to benefit KEXP, you and McCready. And that was a, and that was I, I thought like 500 people show up. Mike's like, no, 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 10,000. I'm like, per, you're in Pearl Jam world, dude. It's going to be, I'm, I'm in the real world. <laughs> yeah. 10,000 people did show up. I That's have right. never seen the market look like that before. It was incredible. It was, and the day was perfect. It was. Mark Arm mm-hmm. as Iggy was killer. Uh, I just want to introduce the band really yes, quick. Please, yeah. Aubrey Richmond on the fiddle and vocals from the 509, by the way. Oh. 
uh, John Schreffler on pedal steel and the guitar and vocals, Ted Camp on, on bass and vocals, and Jamie Douglas on the amazing drummer we have over here, and of course, Shooter Jennings, my partner in this whole thing. Very cool. And thank you all once again. And Duff, also, thank you for writing bass lines that are just as memorable as any lead vocal as well. It's always been a pleasure to listen to your music. Thank you so much. I a appreciate it. Absolutely. Right. That's Duff McKagan live here on 90.3 KEXP Seattle. Discover new music at listenerpoweredkexp.org.